Dargo's Dark Dream The Second Tale Written and Read by Jerry Hart Part 1 Josh Chapter 1 Josh, take a look at this strange bird. I turned to Astrid, who was looking up at something in a tree in front of her. I looked up at the hot sun, which felt horrible on my skin, wondering if her father, Nauki, was with us. He was a nature demon, so he controlled almost everything, including the weather. Astrid stood up straighter than me, making me even more self-conscious of my bad posture. Her short red hair and yellow dress blew in a slight wind. I stopped next to her and looked up at the tree. There were so many in the forest in front of us, so it took me a few moments to find hers. I saw a dark red bird staring right at us and figured that was the one. What's so strange about it? I asked. I've lived on Dargo Island my whole life, and I've never seen this bird before. Have you ever been to this part of the island before now? She looked behind us, at the grassy hill and cliff, and shook her head. But, still, I would have seen this bird before. I know all about the other creatures, like Floxen and Bethels. Victor and I went on a quest once to catch Floxen. I thought of the dwarf, Victor Stonecrusher. He was about as macho as you can imagine, constantly challenging people to arm wrestling matches. I didn't find it hard to believe he liked going on quests around this mysterious island. Astrid and I were on the opposite side of Dargo Island from where we lived. I had seen a lot of the island during my short time here, but for some reason we'd avoided this part until now. I wasn't sure why. It was beautiful, though the hill on which we stood was steep, and if we weren't careful, we could fall right off the cliff and into the ocean. It's a beautiful bird, except for that sharp beak, Astrid said next. I wonder if Anila knows what kind it is. That's Queen Anila to you, I joked. She told me to just call her Anila. She stuck her tongue out at me. Her people have been on the island longer than us. They should know. Do you have your cell phone on you? She asked. I felt in my pocket and found it there. I don't know why I still have it. It's not like I can call anyone in the real world. Just take a picture, she said, jabbing me with her elbow. I took one of the bird, which suddenly took flight and soared out of the forest over our heads. I was glad it made us turn around to watch, because that brought to our attention that the waves had picked up. On Dargo Island, the waves got up to a hundred feet tall, maybe more. We should get out of here, I said, though Astrid was already walking toward the trail we'd taken to get up here. I followed as quickly as I could. We hopped in a golf cart that was powered by magic. The magic belonged to a man named Rockney, who, thankfully, was now dead. In fact, I'd killed him myself. But it had been in self-defense. Long story short, he was a bad man who was trying to kill his brother Nauki with magical fire, but I intercepted. I almost died in the process, but I'm something called a Gelfin. I don't know much about Gelfins, but I do know they're life-sucking creatures. In order to keep myself alive, I sucked the life out of Rockney. He died in the process. I don't regret my actions. If I hadn't done it, Rockney would have killed his brother and become a dangerous threat to the world. Astrid drove us back to the village, a gated community where only a select few of islanders lived. I used to work security for this community. I'd been hired by Rockney before I found out he was evil. The gatehouse, where I used to do my job, 
was pretty much abandoned now. It was a fairly big shack with lots of windows for walls. The lift gates were all fully open now, so anyone could come and go whenever they pleased. It had only been a couple of weeks since all that madness with Rockney went down, but I was already nostalgic for my short tenure as the village's guardian. We drove past a large ring of mountains on the left, and I got a queasy feeling in my gut. The giants of Dargo Island had lived in the middle of that ring, under a frozen pond. Rockney had managed to manipulate them into attacking us in order to get the other islanders to kill them in return. When we got home, Astrid and I were met by a couple of neighbors, Champagne Dubois and Victor. Champagne, an old woman who liked to dress like a much younger woman, had the power to read and affect people's emotions. Victor, as I've already mentioned, was a dwarf, with a long red beard he liked to twist around his index finger. They stood around a hot tub in Astrid's backyard. It was another product of Rockney's magic. The water had healing powers, and had managed to not only heal a knot on my noggin, but also heal my burned body. My Gelfin powers don't heal serious wounds, unfortunately. What's going on? Astrid asked. The hot tub isn't working anymore, Victor said in a typical fantasy dwarf voice, deep and rumbly. I was doing some yard work and cut my hand. I tried to heal it in the tub, but it didn't work. He showed us his hand, which had a nasty gash down the palm. I winced. The sight of blood always sent shivers down my spine. Why do you think that is? I asked. Rockney's magic must be fading from the island, now that he's gone, Champagne said in a sultry voice that reminded me of old Hollywood dames. What have you two been up to? I told them about the bird and asked if they knew anything about it. They said no. Are you ready to start training with your powers? Champagne asked me. We've been putting it off for weeks. You nervous, sugar cougar? I laughed. She always called me sugar something, rarely repeating any one name. I wondered how much effort she put into this game. I guess I'm ready, I finally said. Will it be difficult? I don't like difficult. That's why I never went to college. Champagne grinned. The difficulty depends on how much effort you put into it, sugar. She left me hanging. That was new. And just like her to keep me on my toes. Okay, I said. How about tomorrow? Astrid's mom, Shay, was in the kitchen, cooking something that smelled delicious. She was the person who got me the job on the island in the first place after I saved her from a tornado. A tornado, the good guy, Nauki, had sent for her. But he had his reasons. She looked to her daughter, who sat next to me on the couch. We should visit your father. In his realm? Astrid asked. It's only been a few days since I was last up there. I think it's time you went back. Astrid bit her lip nervously. I understood her apprehension. Her father was a nature demon, after all, and she'd only met him for the first time weeks ago. She'd spent her whole life thinking he was an evil man who wanted to rule the world, one who'd cursed her mother while she was pregnant, causing Astrid to turn into an old woman during the day. I'd used my Gelfin powers and the enchanted hot tub to heal her of the curse but it would take more than that to change her attitude toward her father. Let's head up there, then, Shay said. She looked nothing like her daughter, which was probably why it took me a while to realize they were related. Shay's hair was longer and brown, as opposed to Astrid's short red pixie cut. Will you go with us? Astrid asked me. 
I could tell she really wanted me to go, and that she wasn't just asking to be nice. I agreed. Since we didn't have Rockney to take us to Nauki's realm anymore, Nauki devised a way for us to get there ourselves. We walked to a closet at the end of the hall, behind the kitchen. It was a room that had never been used, even when Rockney owned the house. We stepped inside the dark closet. Shay flipped the light on, and I saw the room was barely big enough for three people. Ready? Shay asked us. We nodded. Shay flipped another switch, one hidden behind a picture of a tornado. Despite my nervousness, I grinned. I would never forget my first encounter with Nauki and his tornado that killed me, temporarily. The room slowly got dark, and the sound of wind seemed to come out of nowhere. I was reminded of a haunted house I went to years ago. Astrid grabbed my hand and squeezed it. The closet brightened again, but instead of being surrounded by close walls, we were surrounded by clouds and a bright blue sky. We were thousands of feet in the air, and a plane's tail actually passed through the clouds like a shark's fin through the water's surface. We stood in what looked like a courtyard in front of a very solid-looking castle made of gray stone. I still couldn't believe the clouds were solid enough for us to walk on. The last time I was here, I'd battled vampires. What do I owe this wonderful pleasure? A voice asked. Shay spun around, revealing Nauki. The nature demon looked like what you would imagine a wizard to be, with a long, light blue beard that went down to his stomach. I noticed for the first time that there were swirls of white in the beard. His eyes grew wide when he saw his daughter. Oh my, he said quietly. It's been days since you were here. After last time, I didn't think you'd ever return. Astrid released herself from my grasp and walked over to her father. Hello, Dad. Sweetheart. I've been eagerly awaiting your return to my realm. She looked around. It feels weird, being so high up. I still haven't gotten used to it. I think that's why my training doesn't go so well. What training? I asked. Nauki looked at me, then at Astrid. Have you not told them? I didn't want them to make a big deal out of it. Besides... The training hasn't gone well anyway. What training? Shay asked, sounding both intrigued and irritated. She's been training to become a nature demon, Nauki said. What? Shay seemed horrified. Why do you sound like that? Nauki asked. This is good news. She is the rightful heir, after all. Who do you think would take over after my time is done? She's just a child, Nauki. You can't possibly expect her to take on such responsibility at such a young age. I just stood there, shocked by this family drama. I felt like an intruder. I didn't know what went into being a nature demon, but I did know Rockney killed in an effort to become one himself. You're acting like I forced this upon her, Nauki said to Shay. She expressed interest. Why do I doubt that? I'll bet you shamed her into wanting to continue this legacy. I know you, Nauki. I used to be married to you. It's true, Mom, Astrid finally said. After being cooped up on that island for so long, I wanted to do something important. I asked him what it was like to be a nature demon. That's what makes my failed training so frustrating. I want to do this, Mom. Shay grabbed her daughter by the shoulders and steered her away. Sorry to bother you, Nauki. We'll go now and talk about all this later. He suddenly appeared sad. Not a bother at all. I enjoyed seeing you all. Please visit often. Shay and Astrid walked me back to the spot where we first appeared. We were back at the house moments later. <laughs>